I, and I like that symbol at the beginning. Yeah, it's yeah. way oh, can I, I didn't hear it with it. Yeah. Uh, Just the... Um, I mean, they've got some other symbols. No, I think we're mucking around too much. Okay. And I, and I... <laughs> My background with brass bands started uh, many, many years ago. In fact, I was eight years of age when I think my dad gave me my first cornet. Uh, it was in the Salvation Army, and uh, I joined uh, the junior band playing the cornet, which I loved, and I've been a cornet player ever since. And I think um, with my dad as a cornet player, we used to play duets, and uh, that went on for some time until uh, I, I joined the senior band when I was 14 years of age. And whereabouts was that? This was in Plymouth, in Devon in the UK, and uh, the Salvation Army, Plymouth Exeter Hall, and um, it was a thriving uh, little community then with um, a, a great brass band and, and a songster brigade, and um, uh, very influential on my music career. I think music from a very young age has had a, a, a big effect on me and uh, mentors with cornet playing, uh, with James Shepherd and, and people uh, in Black Dyke and the, the great uh, brass bands. Uh, I never thought I would take up conducting until I was given an opportunity, uh, I think when I was about 13 or 14. and I. Um, I just thought it was something very special. I guess uh, I've had, I've been very fortunate to learn all, uh, under a lot of great conductors in England, and the the top uh, mentors. I used to go and travel uh, to the other end of the country just to hear a workshop from a top conductor, such as Howard Snell. Um, the Childs Brothers, um, from uh, Peter Parks, all these, um, I guess, uh, passed down to me from listening to, um, I was a great avid listener of brass bands, I knew what I wanted, and it was my job to try then, when I took on uh, musical director, to try and um, portray that over to the band and to the players, and I knew what, I think that was the main thing, if I knew what I wanted, uh, that's what I had to get out of this brass band. I was in Cornwall conducting the Bodmin Town Band we had, uh, I was with them for five years, and we had three years of success as uh, uh, Cornish champions and Southwest champions. Um, I think that was three years running. Uh, I think it was in 1995, I seen an advert in the brass band world, uh, advertising for a musical director for the TVNZ Brass in Auckland. I thought, there's no harm in uh, just trying for this, this uh, musical director position. And um, I went for it. In the end, uh, two people it came down to uh, got the audition. It was in fact myself and um, a player from the Grimethorpe Colliery Band.
I always maintain that with any band I take, it takes about two years to uh, build them uh, into what you would like them to sound like, uh, players to get in, and it takes a good two years. And then hopefully you try and reap the benefit after that two years. Uh, the players were, I gotta say socially in, in New Zealand, were great. Uh, there was a lot of um, high-end business people. Uh, we had to make a lot of changes and I gradually uh, built the band to um, how I wanted it. Uh, it was no overnight success. We had two years, I think, and then in 1999, we managed to win the New Zealand Nationals, uh, which was a great win, taking out every event uh, and, and getting a clean sweep. We also were Entertainment Band of the Year in 1999, 2000 and 2001. Uh, it was a great five years for me in New Zealand. In 2001, I think it was, I got invited over to do a few weekends in Brisbane Excelsior. And I've got to say, these weekends were very enjoyable, uh, a full band, all very keen, and we ended up doing some good concerts in the QPAC, and uh, I really enjoyed myself. I saw a challenge here um, that, in the end, I, I couldn't turn down. The offer was good. And after five years in New Zealand, even though I did enjoy it, uh, Brisbane was beckoning and boy, I'm glad I made the move. I'm Gareth Lawless, I've um, got the great privilege of being the president of the Brisbane Excelsior Brass Band. Um, the band has, has been around for 103 years now, uh, first started in 1912, and, uh, and now we culminate an organisation of around 80 members, uh, two brass bands, an A grade band which is the Brisbane Excelsior Brass Band, and then we have a second band which is a B grade band called Windsor Brass. Um, over the years, the band's always been a figurehead in the Brisbane music scene, playing, you know, um, in the bandstands and uh, playing for the people of Brisbane for a hundred years. Um, but these days, uh, things are a little bit different in brass banding, and we tend to play in larger concert halls, Brisbane City Hall, QPAC. Um, I've had the privilege of playing in the United Kingdom and Birmingham Symphony Hall and a number of places. So um, we're a very, very, very diverse group of musicians. Um, who all come together for the love of music. Um, under Howard Taylor, uh, the band uh, before my time, uh, procured uh, Howard from, at the time, from Waitakere, Auckland Brass over in New Zealand. And uh, he came in 2002 to Brisbane Excelsior organisation and set about uh, instigating his plan for success. And over the years, it's, uh, it's going to be quite poignant in the history of brass banding and the annals of Australian brass banding, um, having now won uh, eight national championships and two New Zealand championships, uh, having played at the British Open, Cambridge Masters, performed in Hong Kong, performed in China. Um, and it's quite an impressive resume for the band in the last uh, 12, 13 years since how it's been around. I suppose they didn't take it 
maybe as seriously as I, I would like. Uh, there were a lot of changes that I had to make when I came in. Uh, a lot of players were not up to the standard and I did make it very clear when I took over that probably the band sat in front of me was not going to be the band that wins its first contest nationally. I um, changed things in the fact that I started a second band and although it uh, didn't go down very well first of all with me inviting players of the number one band to join the second, uh, gradually uh, it started from four players, went to six and eight and then gradually I started up a second band called Windsor Brass who are now uh, good in their own right as a B-grade band but that started up a feeder band and then I got in the better players for Brisbane Excelsior. The duties of a musical director uh, is so wide, you have such an area to, um, to control, I suppose. I always say to bands people, have a go at being a musical director just for a short time and you will see that you never stop thinking about music. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're home studying scores, you're thinking about new music, you're thinking about the bands running. Uh, you want the committee to work with you, so you have to think about choosing or trying to choose a, a committee that is on the same ideals and same thoughts as yourself. Uh, the duties of a musical director with brass bands, I think, are so different to a professional mus musical director of an orchestra. Uh, it's like running a business, and you, you have to have people around you uh, that are good, and I tried to try my hardest to choose successful people around me. Uh, having a president that you can work with and a secretary is, is a must. Uh, and, and they've got to have the same um, ideas and uh, same thoughts as you of where the band's going to go in the future. And if you've got that, it's half the battle. I guess um, when you're talking musically in front of 28, 30 people of all different standards, uh, I say to people that um, music is not always the be-all and end-all. You have to know music, but you have to know 26 personalities as well. And man management is a huge part of being a musical director. Two thousand and seven and two thousand and eight were, I think, our busiest years with concerts and contests. We had some thirty-five uh, gigs on during the year, which, for uh, an Australian band, is is probably a little bit unique. Our first nationals win in two thousand and five. Uh, we then have four wins nationally in a row. Uh, we did two in New Zealand, and then we took a trip to the British Open in 2009 and uh, returned to the national stage in 2010 where we won in Hobart. And I guess after eight years with a band and I thought I needed a little bit of a, a change and so that was my direction over to the UK and uh, I wanted to see how I could fare in the UK bands. And, um, I took up a position of conductor of the Fairies Band, uh, working with Russell Gray, and really enjoyed my time there. This was a very strange feeling. Gunnada Band of New South Wales had asked me to conduct them at the uh, Nationals in Melbourne, 
And yes, it was the first time I was going to come up against my old band, Brisbane Excelsior. And I've got to say, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right at all. But I was there to do a job with Gunnada, and I was going to do the best that I possibly could. I did hear Excelsior on the day. I thought they played extremely well. And you know, sometimes with contests, it sometimes just goes your way. And for me, uh, we had a win with Gunnada in, uh, I think, every event and we took it out. And so, although Excelsior weren't too happy, I was extremely pleased to um, win with a different band. Uh, and that was just a, a one year, and by the next year, it was Excelsior approaching me uh, to come back. And in a way, after two years of freelancing, I was really happy to uh, get back to my home in Brisbane Excelsior. I wanted to put down something to celebrate, really, the 10 years since our first Nationals win in 2005. And what I've tried to do is to pick music out of the big events over those years, uh, the 100 years uh, celebration of Excelsior, the G20 um, big concert that we did with James Morrison, and all relevant music which has uh, assisted us, I suppose, as well in becoming the top band of Australasia. There's also, we put on a winning performance of uh, our Perth Nationals win. And the music, I think, is gonna be a great, uh, a great combination, uh, a great diversity, and for uh, our public, general public, is gonna really enjoy, I feel. Yeah, I think um, often that there's, uh, there's definitely a perception from the public of a brass band being a whole lot of uh, senior citizens playing brass instruments in the bandstands of, uh, of Centennial Parks and Botanic Gardens. But, however, for Brisbane Excelsior, it's quite different to that. A number of the mem members, uh, arguably, would be good enough to play on local orchestras or professional uh, music groups. However, instead of being professional musicians, they're quite simply plumbers and builders and teachers. Um, we have members from all walks of life. Um, and in their spare time, as a hobby, they just happen to be incredibly talented musicians. Um, so for the band as a whole, there's a lot of things that we look at when we plan a year. They can be attending contests in different centres in Australia. They can be looking at doing uh, smaller gigs uh, for the Metropolitan and Brisbane City Council and the city's parks. It can be our own concert series that we put on in the concert halls around South East Queensland. Or in this case, it can be a simple matter of uh, recording two CDs in the space of the last six months. Uh, commercially, it's important for the band as being the leading exponent of our genre in Australia to be putting out high quality, first rate uh, CDs and recordings to give our listening public an opportunity to purchase and to take the band sound home. And uh, the first CD we recorded this year was in conjunction with Legacy Foundation, who are the uh, preferred foundation for the RSLs. We've recorded a CD full of Anzac music. Um, this music really is documenting what kept morale up during World War II and it's really aimed at the older citizens and also for the younger citizens to understand the sound of the times back in those days. Uh, we've also done some practicalities of it as well to increase the marketability of the CD by recording the last post in the Ravelli. Uh, at the end of the CD, so that way it's appealing to schools or other companies who may want a recording of the last post if they can't find a bugler at the time. So there are little things that we always look at as a band management to how we can be a little bit more marketable, not just to our listening public, but actually have some form of tangible purpose behind it.
The most recent CD recording is based off 10 years of excellence and that's very much in conjunction with Howard's time with the band. Um, the band has had an unprecedented run of results that hasn't been seen in Australasia and as a result of that the CD documents a culmination of key pieces and uh, symbolises the last 10 years as a whole. Um, there's also um, some wonderful performances on there from Perth in 2013 with Devil in Deep Blue Sea that's been put on there and that was after Howard took a two year uh, break from the band and came back and first go won a contest in Perth which has been excellent. So we're hoping to do well financially from the CD, that'll help us put money back into other infrastructure requirements like instruments and music and also perhaps give us the financial ability to look at some more projects in the future. The future with Brisbane Excelsior Band needs to really come back to its name. Excelsior means onwards and upwards and that's very much what has to happen. There's been a really distinct focus on achieving contest success in the last 10 years and I think the CD nicely perhaps puts an underline and a full stop after that. Um, it's really important for us to be two, three steps ahead of the members themselves in the band and that we ensure that we've got exciting things for them to be doing with their time. So. Next year we've got four part concert series. We're going to be performing with the Cambrian Choir out in Ipswich. We're also performing in QPAC with, uh, with an international show that's coming to town to open Brisbane Festival. In the year's future, we're looking 2017 possibly to pop over to New Zealand and compete in the contest there. That'll be the first time the band will have gone back in 10 years and that'll mark 10 years since we last won the New Zealand contest. So we've always got one eye forward, um, but it's really important that as a team, the committee, Howard, musical director, um, and even the second band, Windsor, that we're all operating within the values of the organisation. We're always keeping an eye on the future and we're always trying to be relevant and current to the membership.